Let's talk about the language. Um, tell us something, give us the basis of Igbo language for people who maybe want to start or maybe want to understand the basis of Igbo language. And I'll ask you a few things from there. Right. So one of the things, you know, I said earlier that spirituality now reforms the way I approach things. Right. And so one of the things I've realized is that my desire to have the Igbo language taught effectively um, is not for me to aggrandize myself with it. Right. So I'm going to give you some of the tips that we use that can do to effectively teach people. But it goes into understanding the Igbo language itself. Right. So one of the approaches we use and I don't care. I want somebody to start uh, a medu.me or uh, this dude or whatever they want to do and copy exactly. I don't care. Go ahead. I don't care. Right. The one of the things that um, we do. Right. Is we we study the language as the language, not I'm trying to learn a language. No, this Igbo language has a different nature than English and, you know, the, the different language. Than that. What are one of the things in the nature of the Igbo language? In the Igbo language, the our ancestors put to get the language together or found their inspiration, whatever to call it, by trying to say as much as possible with one single word. So in English, there is a pride the English language takes in having many words. Oh, we can describe everything. There's a word for everything, that kind of thing. Dictionaries are extremely thick, that kind of thing. Whereas with the Igbo language, you can take one word, like ke, and you can say 7, 10, 20 different things with just that word, just that little tiny root. You understand. So instead of teaching people with kedu, we don't go, um, oh, um, ubuala's car. This is that. This is that. That's not how we're going to do it with Kedu. That's not how we do it with Kedu. What we do is we give that we we isolate those words that allow you to say a hundred things, right? And what you come to find is that they're all verbs. The Igbo language is a verb-based language. Everything is an action, right? Uche. I'm sitting on an uche, right? But the verb in uche is che, which is to wait or to be still, right? O, if you see O in front of something, it usually, its purpose of existing is actualizing the verb that follows. You understand? Oche, something that exists to make me say still. Oh, a chair. You understand? But if I say chair, that means wait. Now we're not talking about a chair at all. You understand? Onye che, a security guard. So when you t we teach people those little, those roots, che, and then from once the person becomes comfortable being able to say it and be confident and, be, and understanding what it is, you now start showing them all the things they can do with that tiny little tool, right? So rather than beginning with the alphabet, we begin by teaching the verbs. That's the actual alphabet. And those verbs unlock this thing where you can say thousands of things. In a, you can learn thousands of words in a very short amount of time if you know how to play with verbs, right? The Igbo language, and I'm finding a lot of different African languages are very mathematical. In math, there are only nine digits, 10, if you want to say 10, sure. There are only 10 digits. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But with those nine digits, you put them together in different combinations and you make an infinite amount of numbers. So if I learn how to count to 100, I have also learned how to count to uh, 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 1 billion because it's the same pattern. I'm, I'm doing a lot with very little amount of digits. It's not that every single word has its own, uh, every single number has its own symbol, which is how English approaches language, right? So in doing that, right, in understanding the nature, again, infusing my ability to research and what I do, in understanding the unique nature of the Igbo language, it then allows us to teach it very effectively. We have people who have never heard the language in their life, but perhaps they took a DNA test or they maybe something else saying on my channel resonated with them. They signed up for Kidu and they're speaking Igbo right now, three months, within three months, because of that, because you, you understand how it is. And you'll see it at home too. You'll notice at home, the, an individual will speak, it's not uncommon for someone to speak three, four languages, right? The minute somebody goes to the North, give them less than a year, they can speak Alsa. And they go to Yoruba land, give them maybe a year, two years, they're speaking Yoruba. You understand? It's common because we as Africans understand the rhythm of our languages. 
And it's easy for us to pick up other languages for that reason. There's something we understand about language that is not understand out, understood outside. You understand? I, I, like, I like the way you, you dance to that rhythm. That is very important. <laughs> there is power there. <clears throat> but it's really very interesting, you know, when you were looking at the, the Igbo language as an actual language, you know, that it is uh, uh, vowels and it is uh, all action based. Mm -hmm. This pattern, is it peculiar to the Igbo language or is it something that is common along the language in the geography? Um, I think any language in the Kwa language family, they call it Kwa language family, um, is going to have that pattern, right? It's going to have that pattern. And let me let you know now, we're all the same people. <laughs> we're all the same people. When you when you get past the trivialities, right? Oh, in uh, 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 in Delta State, they wear a British bowler hat at their traditional attire, and in this state, they wear a red cap. That's a joke. Okay, so they're different, you know. Oh, Yoruba, they say "et" um, uh, or something like that, and Igbo, they say "nti." They're different. When you go as far as I've gone, you come to find that oh, these are the same people. These are all the same people. So these rules I'm talking about, I can go ahead and make a guess and say that between what we now call Nigeria and what we now call Ghana, the rules are going to be the same. Now, I'm willing to say it goes well beyond that. But I'm, I think most African languages in that zone are verb-based languages, and you learn them quicker focusing on the verbs. Also for the language, <clears throat> we're going to have time to dig more on that uh, also on another occasion. Now, Tell people, how can they connect with you? Maybe they want to know more about what you do. I don't know, you have some courses out there. They want to take some of the courses. They want to support you. Why don't you? Well, you are doing a great work. Uh, tell them how to support you. Promote yourself in these few seconds. Cool. Obey, thank you very much. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, uh, search me on YouTube, The Medicine Shell, just spelled exactly how it sounds, The Medicine Shell. I am also on Twitter at Shell Medicine on Instagram as The Medicine Show. And then of course, if you want to study further and uh, support the channel, the best way to do it is on patreon.com slash The Medicine Show. My patrons have access to my in-house library, the Odinani digital calendar, and then our Odinani group study where we get together and we discuss these topics and they apply to life and things like that on um, every two weeks. And that's my, it's my favorite part of the month is doing that, right? So all of that is available on YouTube. Medicine Shell, uh, Twitter, Shell Medicine, uh, Instagram, The Medicine Shell, and then Patreon.com slash The Medicine Shell. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. You can see a lot of commonality in our culture. Uh, so we really need to be digging in more to, to find out that we, all of us are really one. Huh? We can live beyond this artificial barrier that is out there. Because if you look at it from the point of view of language now, you can take it up from the point of view of uh, of of, uh, of our spirituality, our um, the way we, we are basically set up as a people, we are the same. We are the same people. Uh, even the language, even though we might speak it differently, it doesn't necessarily say that we are different because there are a lot of commonality in it. Right. And, and we can do this when we look beyond the artificial barrier that are out there. So now, to those people out there, particularly in the diaspora, who want to learn more about their root. What would you recommend? Because you, you are in the United States. You are not in, in a car or maybe in a quiet state. You are doing all this one in the United States. I am in Italy. I'm doing what I'm doing. No? You don't need to necessarily be in Africa before you can do African project. Yeah. So what is your recommendation for them? Yeah. Um, recommendation is usually to start from a point, right? So if you are trying to learn about Africa, you're not, you're not going to learn anything. Uh, because it's like trying to drink a lake. <laughs> you understand? Uh, you have to start from a point of interest or a point of whatever. Uh, but if you're trying to reconnect to your culture and so forth, um, there's a, we are like you said, we're in, we're past the age of physical geography. So there's a lot online to uh, look at and assess. Um, and one of the best ways to start is just looking online and at your culture or what you're interested in. Um, of course, verifying, not verifying, I, I don't like that word anymore, but checking it with multiple sources and that kind of thing. So uh, search online, just like anything else, search online. Um, if you're interested in the spiritual aspect or the spirituality, 
the very first thing you must do is learn the name of your ancestors. Learn the name of the people that came before you in order, right? So you're never it's a lifelong journey. You're never going to learn them all. Um, but just spend your life learning as many of them as possible. That is the beginning of everything. The next thing, if you are, own, maybe say you've only been removed by one or two generations from home, go and find out who you reincarnate from. That is a good message that is left out there. Do you want to add anything to conclude the conversation? This is the last statement. I think we've had a really good conversation. Um, uh, nothing is really coming to mind other than me thanking you for this opportunity. Um, I was binging a few episodes uh, last week, and you, the work you're doing is beyond phenomenal because so many people out there are doing different things, but you're giving them uh, a stage for everybody to see the full picture because all of these different perspectives are coming to one place. So thank you for what you're doing. I, I don't doubt that you will be our CNN in due time, <laughs> our Larry King in due time. Um, and, uh, you know, it's already in you. So thank you. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it.